This is part four of the extremely high yield review for the US Assembly Step 3 and the US Assembly Step 2 CK. So let's begin. If a premenopausal woman presents with an aversion to sexual intercourse due to muscle spasm or pain with penetration, but they have a normal external pelvic examination, then you need to suspect genital pelvic pain or penetration disorder, also called vaginismus. Transient synovitis. So this is an inflammatory condition involving the synovial lining of weight-bearing joints with the hip being most commonly affected. So classically what you'll see is a child presents and they previously had a viral infection and now they have pain on weight bearing. Their gait can also be affected with a refusal to ambulate because of the pain, tenderness over the joints, and pain elicited with range of motion. So to treat these patients, you need to advise them to rest and also you can give NSAIDs such as ibuprofen. So diabetic drugs are extremely high yield and the most commonly tested one is metformin. Metformin is a biquinide that decreases hepatic gluconeogenesis, decreases intestinal absorption of glucose, and improves insulin sensitivity by increasing peripheral glucose uptake and utilization. So the side effects of metformin include decreased B12 reabsorption, so they can have a B12 deficiency. Patients taking PPIs can also have a B12 deficiency, very high yield. Metformin can also lead to a lactic acidosis, and they do not have an association with hypoglycemia. However, other anti-diabetic drugs such as sulfonylureas that increase the release of insulin do have an association with hypoglycemia. Contraindications for metformin include renal issues and IV contrast. So if you have a patient that is going to undergo a procedure that includes you know, inserting or injecting contrast, then you want to discontinue metformin before. And metformin is also weight neutral or it can even um, cause a weight loss. What is the next best step in management for a stable patient with a history of diabetes who has abdominal pain and needs CT with contrast? So like I previously said, you need to discontinue metformin. So if a patient is getting surgery or they're doing a procedure that includes IV contrast, then you need to stop metformin because of the risk of lactic acidosis. So patients who have been on metformin for several years can develop a megalobastic anemia. This is because of a B12 deficiency. And remember, you can also see this in patients taking PPIs. So let's take a quick review of ENT. So it's very important that you're able to distinguish between serous otitis media and acute otitis media. The serous otitis media presents after a upper respiratory tract infection with middle ear effusion, but middle ear inflammatory findings are absent. So no ear pain, no fever, no red or erythematous tympanic membrane. So if you see a child that recently had a upper ester tract infection and they have a middle ear infu effusion, but they have no middle ear inflammatory findings, you want to think about serous otitis media. So the underlying cause of this condition is a dysfunction of the eustachian tube. And most of these cases are self-limited. However, in acute otitis media, they will have signs of air inflammation. So they will have a fever and erythematous tympanic membrane with retrotympanic pus or middle air effusion. If a two month old presents with intermittent abdominal pain and vomiting that is sudden in onset, as well as a picture of current jelly stools, you want to think about intussusception. So the clinical presentation of intussusception includes sudden abdominal pain, that's intermittent, vomiting, 
a sausage shaped mass in the right abdomen, current jelly stools, lethargy, and altered mental status. So risk factors of intussusception include hypertrophy of the intestinal pyre patches due to a recent viral illness or pathologic lead points such as Meckel's diverticulum or Henoch-Schonlein purpura. If a patient had a recent viral illness and then they have the sudden intermittent abdominal pain and vomiting, think about intussusception. So to diagnose and treat these patients, you can use air or saline animal. An ultrasound would show a target sign and you can do surgical intervention if the air or saline animal fails to resolve the patient's symptoms or if you see signs of peritonitis. Intestinal perforation is a potential complication of animal reduction. So if you suspect intestinal perforation, go on to do an abdominal x-ray. It's very high yield that you should know that you need to avoid the rotavirus vaccine. So avoid the rotavirus vaccine in henoch schonlein purpura Meckel's diverticulum, and intussusception. Now for a quick biostatistics review. A cohort study is an observational study. This is where groups are chosen based upon the presence or absence of an exposure or risk factor. And then they are followed to see if they develop a specific disease. So when you do a cohort study, you can calculate or estimate the incidence of a disease. Relative risk can also be calculated from a cohort study. A case control study is a retrospective study. So this is where subjects with the disease are compared to another group that does not have the disease. So like the name suggests, for this type of study, you have cases and you have controls. You can calculate the odds ratio in a case control study, but you cannot calculate the incidence. For a cohort study, think about calculating incidence and its relation to the relative risk ratio. While for case control, you can calculate the odds ratio. Streptococcal pharyngitis. Penicillin and amoxicillin are the first line treatments for this condition. Patients typically present with tonsillar exudates and tender anterior cervical lymph nodes often seen on physical exam. Complications of strep pharyngitis include peritonsillar abscess, cervical lymphadenitis, post-strep glomerulonephritis, and rheumatic fever. The eosinophilia sep 2 ck and eosinophilia sep 3 love to test hypersensitivity reactions. So what type of hypersensitivity reaction is included in post-strep glomerulonephritis? If you said type 3, then you're absolutely correct. Hallucinations. If a patient presents with tactile hallucinations, then this is more than likely due to a drug or some toxicology, for example, overdose of drugs or withdrawal from drugs. However, if you see a patient with olfactory hallucinations, these typically occur as an aura for a temporal lobe epilepsy and in brain tumors that affect this part of the brain. To continue your high yield review of the Yosemite Sub 2 CK and the Yosemite Sub 3, all you have to do is click this video right here.